Hello, ladies. The Big Balboski here. And right now, you're listening to the Matt Madness Podcast. They talking all of this madness. Talking all of this madness. Talking all of this madness. They talking. All right, so now we would like to bring in our very special guest for this episode. Uh, superstar wrestler. Uh, somebody who has huge things ahead of him in the future. He's already doing huge things now in the present. Flip Gordon. Flip, thank you for joining us on the show this week. Of course. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, we really appreciate it. We know you got a lot going on, so we appreciate you taking the time. Um, you were actually on our sister show, Falls Count Anywhere, almost exactly a year ago. And you had your first match in Ring of Honor, I believe it was a year ago last week. So Aaron has a question about the last year of your life since we last spoke to you. Yeah, Flip. Okay. <laughs> you, quickly, you, you quickly became a big name within the past year. So um, who are some of the wrestlers that have helped you and give you great advice within the past year? Oh, gosh, there's been so many. Um <laughs> The Young Bucks have been two people that have helped me ever since I stepped foot in the Ring of Honor ring. Uh, whether it was backstage, in the ring, any questions I had, they were always just, hey, if you need anything, let us know. They've been very helpful. Um, there's just so many others. Uh, Alex Shelley, and believe it or not, Cody's been very helpful as well. So wow. Even though we have a little feud. <laughs> he, still, he still has been very, very helpful to me. So it's not all bad with Cody. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that is very good to hear. Um, so your you, your name is Flip, which in, in a lot of wrestling circles, the word Flip can be seen as a bad word in the industry. Um, so with the evolution of athleticism as it's increasing as the years go by, what do you say to people, maybe like Daniel Cormier, for instance, who can't handle kind of the evolution of the in-ring style uh it's an art form everybody has different taste um not everybody's gonna like paintings not everybody's gonna like statues Mm -hmm. uh but there's art for everybody you just have to find your art that you like um the art that i like is high flying it's not everybody's taste but it's what i love it's what i'm passionate about and it's what i'm good at Yeah, so it's interesting that you worded that the way you did, because I remember reading something on, I think it was in Rolling Stone maybe 10 years ago, someone who didn't follow country music went to a country music show and said, I didn't think I'd be able to review this because I wouldn't understand whether it was good or not. And they said, basically, I realized how good it was based on the response of the crowd of people who do love it. So you kind of answered very similar to that, that it all depends on, it's in the eye of the beholder, basically. Oh, 100%. Um, and that actually leads me to, to another thing I kind of wanted to know. Because like we're talking about certain people like certain things. Is there a certain type of crowd that you prefer to p- perform in front of? Um, passionate crowd. I want a crowd that's just going to... I want a crowd that when I'm out there, they're just as excited as I am to be in that ring as they are to be in the audience. When you have that connection, that's when you have special shows. That's when you have that special connection. When they're just as excited as you are, that's how you know it's going to be a special night and that everybody's having fun. Now, will you will you know that before you've even stepped foot out of the entrance? Oh, 100%. You can hear it as soon as they show up. Before, As soon as doors open, you can see the smiles on people's faces. You can tell if people are going to be excited. As soon as that first match is on, you can tell whether they're they're excited to be there or if whether you have to come out and be a little more excited to get them started, you know? Yeah, so we're from... Every crowd's <laughs> different. Yeah, we're from Philadelphia, so we're kind of known for being a pretty <laughs> intense crowd. Is there such a thing as too passionate? Um, I guess it depends who you ask. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, if you start throwing stuff or put the talent at danger, mm-hmm. then that's too passionate, I would say. But long as you stay within your boundaries as a fan, I don't, I don't think there's any limit. Okay, now do do you find? As you start crossing that limit and put start putting people in danger, like the talent, like jumping guardrails and stuff like that, 
that's what I would consider too passionate or too drunk, depending on. Yeah. <laughs> Oftentimes, too passionate is definitely caused by too drunk. I think they're very <laughs> much, very much uh, linked together. Um, now, you obviously are traveling all over the place. We talk a lot on this show about people always talk about the next boom in wrestling and when is WWE going to have their next boom. And we really believe that the boom is happening outside of WWE right now. Basically, everything else is kind of bigger than it's ever been and more followed than it's ever been. Um, are there any other promotions or anything going on for all of you guys who are out there not performing on USA on Monday and Tuesdays that you see as like a rival or an alternative to WWE? Oh, 100%. I think Ring of Honor is an alternative. I think New Japan's an alternative. I think Impact Wrestling's an alternative. Lucha Underground's an alternative. MLW that's new, they're an alternative. There's so many alternatives right there, right now. And I think that's why there's such a boom in wrestling. There are professional wrestlers making a living outside of WWE and making a good living, wrestling every single weekend, traveling the world, doing what they love. Um, so there's definitely an alternative. That's not not everybody has to go there now. You don't have to go there to make a living. You don't have to go there to get your name out there. Right. There's people doing it without ever stepping foot, and you know what I mean. With social media, anything's possible now. You can you can build your own brand, your own fan base without ever stepping foot in that ring that they 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 call the WWE ring. You know. Right, and I think there are a lot of older fans that don't quite understand that that happens the, re the the new reality of the world like you said social media you can get so much of your stuff out there you can show so much of your personality you can show so much of your personal life or the way you affect fans and obviously you build a following before you've ever even gotten to wwe but so you are in the army national guard correct that is correct now, I read an interview that you did with ESPN, I believe, in February, and I think what I read was that you are, you're done with the National Guard on May 1st. Is that correct? Uh, that is when my contract expires. That is correct. Okay, and I'm not, it may be too personal for me to ask if you're planning to re-up that contract, but I assume your responsibilities there kind of take away from some of the time you can compete. And I believe, is this your third year in the business? Uh, yes, I will hit year three for my first match on May 6th. Okay, that is my 39th birthday, so we'll, be, <laughs> we'll both be celebrating that day in one way or another. Um, well, happy birthday, Bob. <laughs> thank you, and happy anniversary to you. Um, Appreciate it. Do, are, do you think you've found way more success way quicker for not being able to dedicate yourself 100% full-time to this? Does that blow you away, kind of, how far you've gotten with having at least somewhat of a limitation on the time you could devote to it? Um, not necessarily, because I just looked at it as, okay, I have one weekend a month that I have to dedicate to the Army. That's mm -hmm. one weekend a month I'm losing to my competition. You think all those other guys that are out there wanting to become professional wrestlers, they were, they were wrestling four weekends. I was only wrestling three weekends because of Army. So I had to work harder to keep my name in, pe in promoters' heads to keep my name out there, to keep getting bookings. I had to work, I think, harder because I had this distraction, because I had this other thing that I had to deal with, which was the Army. So, But I never made an excuse. I used it as motivation. <laughs> it's like, okay, I have one less weekend than everybody else, then I'm going to do one sh more show than everybody else, or I'm going to travel further than everybody else. I just, I just set different limits for myself and different goals for myself than other people. I love that. So basically you took what a lot of people like myself viewed as a disadvantage and you kind of turned it into a reason to work even harder at what you're doing. Oh, 100%. Because at first the Army didn't want to work with me. And so like soon as I showed them what I was doing, mm -hmm. they were able to start working with me. And now I – like right now I'm almost done. I actually had Army this week. And tomorrow's my last physical day of training for the Army. After that, I just wait till my contract expires. Right. But right. before, I had to do it on weekends. Now I get to do it during the week because wrestling is my full-time job. It pays all my bills. Wow. So so they basically made that uh, kind of you, almost like an exemption for you to be able to pursue your career. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. They they the sergeant major, his name's Sergeant Major Bowen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came to my rescue because I was about to get AWOLed out of the army. Which wow. I would got kicked out. And he came to my rescue and he saw what I was doing and he was just like, hey, man, like I want to help you as much as I can. I want to help you finish your time in the army. That way you can get out the right way. That way, if anything ever happens, you can always come back in. That's awesome. That That's great to hear. All right, Flip, going back to what Ron was talking about, the boom, about the boom period of wrestling is outside of WWE. Do you have any interest in ever pursuing a WWE career? Um, if you would have asked me three years ago when I started, the question without a doubt would have been yes. Uh, t- today, I don't know. Uh, there's so many other options. Um, I'm still only three years in the business. Do I see myself going there within the next few years? No, because I'm still brand new to this business. I'm still learning, and I think I don't think I'm ready to go somewhere like that yet. I want to build my name outside of there and learn as much as I can. That way, when I go there, I know without a shadow of a doubt in my mind that I'm going to make it there and be a top star there. Yeah, because um, a lot of times when we go to wrestling shows, we actually went to the the previous Ring of Honor taping here in Philadelphia, and we always have the best times there. And we all and we always see all the hard work and the dedication you guys put you you put into, and you're not supervised. You're able to go all in, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we really enj- we really think that a lot of people don't need WWE anymore because with the world of social media, everything has grown to a higher extent, and everybody can get their name out there. Especially some someone like you who has taken a big leap within the last year. One hundred percent, and I, there's just so much freedom when you're on the indies. Even mm-hmm. with me with Ring of Honor, I have so much freedom. Like right now, I can still work indie shows in the states. I can do Ring of Honor. I can do international. I can, I can, pretty much do anything I want. I have freedom over my character, over what I want to do, what I want to wear, where I want to work. Like I have complete freedom. So it's really tough when you have freedom like myself um, to be like, all right. Now I'm going to take a leap of faith and give up <laughs> all my freedom and give up all my creativity to somebody else and then just hope that I'm going to be happy. You know what I mean? Whereas right yeah. now I could do all that myself. If I'm not happy, that's on me. But I am happy and I'm living a dream just three years into this. So Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, because last year, around, ironically around this time last year as well, we had Leo Rush on and he was he had a lot of interest in WWE and we also talked about all the things that he did on the independent scene with his character and stuff and then going to what's going on, what's going on now with him in NXT, we hardly see him, we don't see much of him and all that freedom that he had on the independent scene you, you don't see it anymore and you he kind of seems to be not himself basically Yeah, it's because I think they're just signing Anybody and everybody right now. Not anybody, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah. Anybody with buzz, anybody that's talented, anybody that's going to have a future in this, they're trying to pick them up. That way, it's less competition for them. Oh, absolutely. And actually... And I if I it... went there right now, the same thing would happen. I'd be repackaged. I wouldn't be <laughs> Flip Gordon. I'd be Billy Bob. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would hope nobody would approve Billy Bob for you, but you're, you're right. That very well could happen. Um... So I, I actually read in that ESPN interview, you said you're not in a rush to go to, to get to WWE, which you just reiterated here, that you want to become a big name first. I think the example you used was, I'd like to come in as AJ Styles as more of a made man than come in at the bottom. So does that mean, would you be disinterested in something like NXT or the cruiserweight division in WWE? Um, not that I, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't, but I would want to go in there and work. I wouldn't want to sign to WWE and then go to class five days a week and not be wrestling on my weekends. Right. I'm already living my dream. Why would I sign somewhere and then not wrestle? You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless I could be guaranteed, <laughs> hey, you're going to wrestle this many dates. You're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. Like, I, I have no interest. I want to wrestle. I don't care where I wrestle. I just want to wrestle. You know, in, in the three, so I think everything kind of, there's a learning curve in anything we do. And I'd assume your first year you had to retain so much, and maybe it might have been a little less in year two. How how much do you feel you've grown in year three as opposed to how much you grew in the first two years? I think in the last year, I've learned the most out of all three years. Really? Like what, what so type I've learned, of stuff? I've learned more in the last year than I did my first two years. Hmm. That That's very interesting. What Are we talking more 
in ring? Are we talking more character work or psychology? Everything. Character work, psychology, in ring work, uh, the business, um, traveling, um, bookings, everything. Just the business as a whole. I've learned so much over the last year that it can't even. Like, I'd probably, I probably learned more this last year than the last two years combined. So that's amazing. So basically the complete inverse of, of what I would have assumed, that you learn the most at the beginning and you learn less as you go along. It's pretty crazy that you're learning more now. But I guess there's so much that goes into the business of wrestling. You're probably almost never done learning, really. No, I learn something new every single day. Not just every day I have a match. Every single day I watch wrestling, I learn something. What, what are you watching are you going out of your way to watch certain talents or certain shows? Like, what is it you're trying to consume when you're not actually doing it yourself? Um, I love watching matches that have a lot of buzz. So if I hear about a match that did well this past weekend, I'm going to try to find it. If somebody's talking about it, they obviously did something good. I want to know why. I want to know what they did, how they did it. Um, I just want to know what's what's working and what's not. And when you know what's working, you're able to apply it. And then if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, then you have to find something else. And I've been lucky enough to find things that have been working for me. Yeah, that's awesome. When, when you rewatch some of these matches, is there anything specific you're looking for, like Manny Rick? Because we, we care about the – we appreciate all the little things that happen in the ring. Are there any things that – are there any matches or anyone you watch specifically to pick up these little things? Uh, not really. I love just watching random matches. Um, but like I said, I don't want to watch a match if it's just going to be boring. I want something <laughs> that that's ha that has some buzz around it or people are talking because it means something's good about it. And then I like watching it to see what's good about it. I don't like hearing what's good about it. I want to find out for myself, whether it's the story that they're told, uh, the moves that were done, um, the characters. Um, those are things that I look for. And I, I love looking for now i think i love it more than anything it's just little things like like i watched my match with cody back at mm -hmm. manhattan mayhem and just the way he looks at cameras the way he <laughs> adds his character where he adds his character um is just phenomenal and so when i'm watching wrestling i'm looking for things like that the little things that are going to set people apart what are some of the matches other than that match with cody you had at manhattan mayhem have you been watching lately to pick up stuff of my matches? Oh, in gen just in general. In general? Oh, jeez. I've been watching a lot of New Japan stuff lately mm -hmm. just because I've been trying to learn that style. But I love watching WCW Cruiserweights. That's like my, <laughs> that's like my ultimate favorite <laughs> stuff to watch. Good pick. So like, how long would you say when you see something that you like or see something that stands out to you? Is it, is it usually something you're ready to implement into your game immediately? Is it something you kind of try and pick your spots when you'll implement new things? Um, I try to pick and choose because I'll look at something and the first, like if I have an idea, let's say if I have an idea for a move or something, I'll ask around to see if anybody has done the move or anything similar because mm -hmm. I don't want to copy people. I want to be original because when you do something original, you stand out more. Right. Um, so I always try to find out who or what or if it's been done before. And if I see somebody do something, I just try to change it and make it my own. Like my springboard super kick. Mm -hmm. I love just jumping to the top rope and I love super kicks. And I'm like, well, what if I could just <laughs> bounce on the top rope and kick a guy in the face? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so that's kind of how I came up with that move. And then like this, I have. My, uh, I call it the Samoan pop, but it's just a, it's a Samoan drop that I do a flip through at the end. Mm -hmm. And I got it because the idea was, oh, a steamroller is forward or a Finley roll is forward. Yeah. Well, what if I could go backwards? <laughs> and it's just little things like that. that and like, like my, I have a move called the Star Spangled Stunner. It's a corkscrew, a springboard corkscrew stunner. Like, it's just a stunner, but I, I added a, a, twisty and a springboard in there to make my own you know yeah so like a little it's extra flair on that's it. what's going to help you stand out is being original oh absolutely like the the everybody like you've mentioned the the in-ring style that you have the actual mechanics of it everybody's different 
Uh, no, nobody likes, or there's no group of people that all like the exact same style. Everybody likes different things. So really what separates you is how, how you get the crowd to invest in you as a person. They're watching you, the human being, in the ring. You have to find a way, whether it's a certain swagger you have or the way you speak on the microphone. You need to find things that make you stand out and make people care about the athleticism you show in the ring. Um, and with that being said, I know that you've obviously incorporated your service uh, with the Army into your character. Is that something that you want to kind of be a thread throughout your whole wrestling career? Um, I'm not quite sure, actually. like, It's weird because in the beginning I didn't want to use it. And then I was told I should probably use it. And then I slowly <laughs> started incorporating it. Uh-huh. And now like I have the flip army and the flip fatigues or the army fatigues yeah. and like all this. But I would love to eventually kind of – I don't want to get away from it completely mm-hmm. because it is who I am. I served six years. Um, if it wasn't for the military, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, so I would love to keep it always incorporated into my character, whether it's just a flag on the gear whether I come out in camo, whether I salute, um, it'll always be a part of me. I just don't know if it's always going to be 100% the gimmick you see now where it's camo shorts and army vest. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how much longer it'll just be like that. But I think I'll always rock like a flag on my trunks or something to say thank you to the service because without the service, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, and basically it's, it's just you'll continue to evolve as you go on in your career, which I think is always good. Yeah, exactly. You should always be evolving, always be changing, um, always trying something new. All right, so Flip, you've been a part of the biggest YouTube series in wrestling, Being the Elite, and a weekly thing for us when we watch is, what's Flip doing? <laughs> how, how did be, be, being on be, Being the Elite ha- ha- happen with you guys? Uh, we were down in... Uh, Tijuana, Mexico, <laughs> and the Bucks just approached me, and they were like, hey, can we, can we use you for a short video? And Jesus had to have been right around a month, or I mean a year ago, <laughs> right around a year ago, because it was right after I had signed with Ring of Honor, and they were one of the first people to know, and I hadn't even told anybody yet, and they were like, hey, congrats, welcome to Ring of Honor, and they just happened to say that in the first clip that I was in for being the elite and it just caught on. Welcome to Ring of Honor. Where do you think you know, like where do you think you're going? Uh who the F is Flip Gordon? Like so many different things just kinda just took off. And it was really cool to see the response because honestly, I just thought it was a one and done type thing. I thought it was here. We're going to tombstone you in this <laughs> this stiff Mexican ring and we're going to just make fun of you on our YouTube channel. And it just it just kind of blew up out of nowhere. And now they're 100 episodes in and it's over and nobody knows what's happening. I'm confused. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to do with my free time anymore. Because you're filming being the elite with my friends. And... <laughs> All right, Flip, we don't want to keep you much, from much longer. Um, what is your favorite match that you've had so far? And your favorite experience that you've had? Oh, gosh, that's so tough. <laughs> um, favorite match. Right now, I'm going to say that it was the ladder match at Supercard of Honor. It was me and the Young Bucks versus <laughs> SoCal Uncensored. I don't mean to cut you off, Flip. I, I was there, and my God, you, to- you guys tore the house down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, that match was so much fun, and I think just doing it, I think for me, it was, I was in there doing it with some of my closest friends. I mean, these two guys that have been there since day one of me coming into the company. And then Scorpio Sky is a good buddy of mine. And then to share the ring with Christopher Daniels and Frankie Gazarian, two, in my, in my opinion, two of the old time greats, you know, two guys that are going to remember forever. They've given so much to this business. And to share the ring with them on the biggest show of Ring of Honor history. And just to tear the house down with those guys was an absolute honor and pleasure. So it was, it was definitely one of the funnest matches I've ever been in. and something I'll <laughs> remember forever. Yeah. Uh, so I know you've had a busy week, and I think you have a busy couple days left this week. So I have two more easy questions for you uh, before we let you go. 
Uh, one, I was actually asked by one of our other co-hosts who is not here right now. He wanted me to ask you this. I'm not sure if there's a reason or not, but do you believe that the Earth is a sphere or do you believe that it is flat? You know, I've been doing a little bit more research. Okay. <laughs> and so, what if it's like a cookie? You know, I, mean, cookie. I mean, cookies are flat, but uh, they're also round right. at the same time. <laughs> So what if what if the Earth is like a cookie? You know, what if it's just what if it's both? What if it's just flat and round? So then my follow up would be: if it is like a cookie and it's flat and round, is it one sided or is it two sided? Oh gosh! I guess it would be one sided <laughs> if the image we see has everything on it, right? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I it could be like cookie dough where it's still in the ball <laughs> before it's flat. But you're saying you're not convinced we're living on a sphere. What if it started off as a sphere <laughs> and, the, and the sun heated it up like cookie dough and because of the heat it kind of just flattened out like a cookie? So I have to tell you, I've heard a lot of the, the flat earth theories and a lot of flat earth takes. This is definitely the most interesting and plausible <laughs> one that I've heard, <laughs> I have to say. So I'm, hey, I'm glad he asked me to ask you that. I just keep adding to it, you know. I mean, it's the it's a, it's a flip flat Earth theory, and actually, believe it or not, this Sunday, mm -hmm. mark your calendars. Okay, the twenty second is Earth Day. No, oh, that's true. <laughs> it's Earth Day, or so, in my in my case, Flat Earth Day. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I will be celebrating Flat Earth Day in your honor on Sunday. I love it. By eating cookies, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> chocolate chip is my favorite. So I'll be indulging in some chocolate chip cookies on Sunday. Uh, last Perfect. question. Yeah, last question I have. I saved this one for the end because I thought you might hang up on, on us if I asked uh -oh. you first. <laughs> I, I heard you say on your interview with Falls Count Anywhere last year how you grew up in Montana. You were born in Boston, only lived there for a couple months. But you always hailed Boston as where you were from, correct? Uh, as a kid, yeah. Okay. So, and you uh, you mentioned on there, I love the Celtics, I, I love the Red Sox, whatever the case may be. We're in Philadelphia. The Eagles beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> oh, I knew um, that was coming. <laughs> so, that's behind us. I'm not going to gloat about that. We've done enough gloating in Philadelphia the last couple months about it. I don't need to put you through that. But what you I see, will I thought, you, uh -huh. I just, I was just in ring, I was just in Philadelphia for Ring of Honor. Okay. And I was scared. I'm not going to lie because I know how ruthless <laughs> Philadelphia fans are. Uh huh. And I don't know if you saw the pictures or not, but the weekend before the Super Bowl, I was in Philadelphia rocking a Tom Brady jersey. <laughs> and I wore it to a show and I got booed out of the building. Mm -hmm. That was Evil Flip's debut, believe it or not. <laughs> and mission accomplished. Evil Flip was definitely evil and he did his job correctly but i was scared that when i came back for ring of honor that i was just gonna get crap thrown at me and because i saw the tweets i saw the messages and man they were not nice <laughs> <laughs> now but the... i'm glad that philly was nice to me because i was scared because i love philly and i was like oh man i'm never gonna be able to return after this I, I think in philadelphia a lot of times if if a rival is worthy while you may be venomous you may be nasty I do think there's a level of respect that Philadelphia has for people who are worthy of booing. We won't boo somebody who's not worthy of it. So I think it's a testament to you that you got booed and a testament to you that you can come back and be cheered when you're not wearing the Tom Brady jersey. Um, but then the next question is, are you up for Sixers versus Celtics in the second round of the NBA playoffs in two weeks? Or next week, I should say. I mean, I think it's going to happen. I hope it happens. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Sixers this really? year just because <laughs> Irving's out and Gordon's out. Mm -hmm. And we had such a good year, but I think I don't think we're ready yet. I think we need to rebuild one more year. I think we need to get it. I think I think next year's our year. I think the process, they need some momentum, but I think as soon as they get their, their starting lineup back, I think they're going to be a tough team next year as well. But I think they have a chance to go all the way. Cavs definitely aren't winning it. Uh, oh, I 100% no. agree with that. And I agree with you about the Celtics. It's very difficult to keep advancing when 
your two all-star level, well, two of your three all-star level level players are not in the lineup. And the Sixers kind of found that out the other night, having losing a game without Joel Embiid. But I do think it will be a heated and very competitive series if the Sixers play the Celtics in the second round. Oh, 100%. I mean, Celtics are up 2-0 right now in the series without two of their starting lineup. You know what I mean? Two yeah. all-stars, like you said. Mm-hmm. But the Sixers, they're doing pretty good, too. I mean, I I would not, not be shocked if they go all the way. I just hope that Embiid is able to join back if they do go all the way. So do I, and I hope it's in one of these next two games in Miami. Uh, but if, if this does happen, if we do have that matchup, uh, don't be surprised if I reach out to you at some point during <laughs> that series. Whether it's going good for us or bad for us, uh, I, will, I will probably reach out and, and try to have some type of interaction about six, Sixers Celtics. Yeah, sounds good. Hopefully it's just, I mean, I, I just hope it goes in my favor now. I mean, the Super Bowl didn't, so. So you're, you're due, is what you're saying, in the NBA playoffs. Well, I don't know, because, I mean, normally when a, a town wins a championship, another sports team from that same town usually comes close, if not wins it too. So I wouldn't doubt it if the Sixers pull it off as well. Yeah, well, you've seen it just in Boston. It seems like every team is winning a championship at some point every couple of years. And I'm hoping for my city, after years of championship drought, I'm hoping that that finally happens to us here. Uh, and I, I apologize if it comes at your expense once more. But uh... No, it's fine. I completely <laughs> understand. I mean, every town's got to get their, their gold, you know, I mean, even <laughs> if you have to pay for it. Who's your, who's your NBA champion, Flip? Who's my NBA champion of yeah. this year? Yes. I don't want to go to Golden State, but I have <laughs> such a bad feeling that they're going to win it again. It's kind of hard to predict against them. They, they, they're they historically great. They have four All-Stars, assuming Steph Curry comes back. It is really hard to pick against them. And I'm just – I'm such a basketball guy. I'm just so glad that it's not just the Cavs and the Warriors. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. you have so many good teams right now. You have – I mean, freaking OKC's coming back. Mm -hmm. You have the Rockets. I mean, you can't even count the Rockets out this year. No. Yeah, that's my pick. That's my champion. So we got a Golden so. State Warriors. We got a Houston Rockets. I Just, mean, Miami's not even – I mean, my, I'm surprised they made it. But, I mean, <laughs> they're not looking bad. No, they, they have, Give like, a, a tough couple years, team. They're going to be a contender again. Agreed. The, the NBA is definitely trending upward. Depending on where LeBron goes next year, and I hope to God he doesn't go make a super team because that's just what wussies do. <laughs> Michael Jordan never left. He won six, okay? <laughs> he did. I'm all about loyalty, so I'm hoping that he can just stay and hopefully win another one that way. And if not, then who cares? Yeah, I, I just don't want to see. I just don't want to see. Oh, this team's gonna win. Call it before the season starts, because that's no fun. Then why? Like, why are we even competing? You know? Exactly. You you want some intrigue in the playoffs, other than just one team's championship march that you knew was gonna happen all the way back in October. Yeah, because if he goes to the Rockets, guess what? Rockets are gonna win next year. Like, if they don't, then. They didn't do it right. You know? right, right exactly. Uh, so maybe then the last basketball question. It's a very hotly debated topic in the city of Philadelphia. Rookie of the year, Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers or Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz? Uh, Simmons, is that even a question? Uh, shockingly, shockingly, it is. It is. I can't believe it is, but... To who? Me, me and Ron have debated on this show. <laughs> but until until um, the Sixers won that 16-game win streak to end the season, and, and B, when Embiid went out and Simmons carried the team for that last two weeks, Mitchell was my rookie of the year. <laughs> Flip, I love you Wait, even was more it, was for Simmons, that the way you did. Simmons sat out last year, correct? Yes. Correct. Because he was injured. So yes. technically, this is this is his rookie year. Yes, he is a rookie. He has won Rookie of the Month four times. He will be on the Rookie of the Year ballot. So by NBA definition, he is a rookie. Yeah, I love I love the competition. I mean, I remember seeing the sweatshirt. I remember reading about it. <laughs> so, I mean, but Simmons all the way. Look at the Sixers. Come on. Flip, no questions asked. You have made my night with, <laughs> with that answer to that question the way you did. Uh we want to let you go and get some rest. Is there anything you want to plug, any social media, any shows before uh, you jump off the line? 
Uh, yeah, you can catch me out on Twitter and Instagram. It's all the same at the Flip Gordon. Also, you can help me get booked for All In by going to ProWrestlingTees.com slash TheFlipGordon and ordering my book flip t-shirt. Um, I want to be on the biggest show of the year, All In, so please go help that to help me get booked. We will definitely do what we can no to help flip. you get there. You deserve to be there. We hope to see you there. Uh, flip Gordon, I know in a busy week, thank you for taking some time for us. Yes, thank you. It was you. a blast talking to you, and we look forward to seeing what's ahead for you in the future. I appreciate it, guys. I look forward to talking to you again. And uh, if Celtics don't make it, go Sixers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And Flip, thank you for your service. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I mean, take care. You as well. Hop on the top rope, but the land with elbow. Got him now. Put him down right now. Hit him with the palm handle. Tuning up the band, y'all don't understand. Fist of Superman, it's a summer slam. Here we go again. Fans mocking man, man, I hate my balls. Shut the Vince McMahon, it ain't shake the land off the cell. Fans love it, ain't hard to tell. Talking madness, awesome. Well, what I'm cooking, man, y'all off the smell.